Now that I've done the Sport Essentials update, I'm going to go through the lineup and make my picks for Nationals, which is still at this point a month and a half off for me. We don't bowl until the very end of the tournament in mid-July. I'm going to tell you what I'm actually taking, but I'm also going to give you options from just the current lineup or recently discontinued picks or the arsenal I've put together with what's available right now. I usually take eight balls to tournaments, so seven plus spare, but I'm taking nine to nationals and we'll just swap one from team to doubles and singles. There's an eight ball limit for each squad, but they don't have to be the same eight balls. Since I went so in depth on everything for the sport essentials, I'm going to be a little bit more brief in this one. If you like my jerseys, Rose Doll 10 gets you 10% off your order at checkout at Coolwick. The code is in the description to copy and paste. Follow my Bowlers Mart link in the description for your bowling needs. That associates your purchases with me, which helps me out quite a bit, so thanks for using that. Check out SRG BBFS group on Facebook for all things SPI, and of course thanks to Turbo and especially Storm for keeping us in equipment to show off to everyone. Also, the new super thanks button below the video on the line with the like and share buttons allows you to leave me a tip other than that I could save 15% or more on my car insurance by switching to Geico. Clever little gecko. I'm favoring stronger stuff right now, a lot of ASIMs, and since I see little to no transition on the left side, I don't follow typical adjustments or ball changes, so it's a pretty different world now as far as assembling an arsenal. I recently took the gem to the Greater Ozarks Tournament in Springfield, Missouri, and used it for almost the first two games a team, and it looked pretty good. This is definitely going to be in my Nationals bag. Uh, the balance of this ball on heavy stuff is amazing. It's really like an asymmetric axiom. It's pretty responsive for how strong it rolls and how much traction it gives you. This is the 2019 singles and doubles pattern. The last couple years they've kind of flipped and team is the longer pattern now, so I might get a chance to start with this or use it the whole time in team. The next ball is the dark coat. The video's on the house shot, I haven't had a chance to get footage on something tough, but I've used it on some tough stuff. It also went to Ozarks with me this year. It's been a little quick usually, a little too responsive, but Nationals doesn't look terribly difficult this year, so if I have a bit of room to work with, I can compromise if I don't need the full amount of control the gem gives me. The more room you have to work with, the more the dart can take advantage. It's also a lock for the trip. It's still more controllable than something flippier like a UC2, but it's straight in between the gem and something like that in terms of shape. Half control, half response, a little weaker than the gem, so still a solid step up from the UC2, uh, just more of a shape delta for the gem. We do have a handful of lefties going this year, so if I do end up on the same pair with a couple of them and get into some transition, might have to make some extra adjustments. Uh, the dark could be a great complement if I need to get in a little. For full transparency, I'm going to go sideways here for a couple picks. This is the Roto-Grip Attention Black Pearl. It's an overseas ball, it's not something you can walk into a pro shop and get, so they don't really like me showing this stuff off and there's really not any point to. But I use overseas balls sometimes to fill gaps or to get ultra specific reactions from. This ball is very similar to the Rubicon UC2, but the catch is that it has a very strong cover on it in the Hyper Response Pearl, which is an even stronger formula than Extreme Tracks that's on the Helios. 250RG, 053 differential, and an 011 intermediate differential, so it's a mild ASIM. Basically the Rubicon core with something like the Dark Code or Parallax Effect cover on it, or if you remember the Insight, an even stronger version of that. It gives me like a half step down from the dark code without really dropping cover strengths all the way to a UC2. Uh, that's a huge gap and we really don't have anything to fill that in the line at the moment. If I didn't have this ball, I'd likely replace it with a Nova. It's not really the same thing, but it's not as far down as the UC2 is. Next is another Roto ball, uh, the Torchet. This ball has the Halo Pearl cover in E-Trax P18 and a pretty strong core in the Cardiac at 249, 055, 016. So while the attention gives me a very dark code look but a half step down, this one gives me a more dynamic look, a full step down. Uh, cover strength is lower so it's more responsive. If I have enough friction, this ball really helps me take advantage of that. I drilled this one specifically to replace my UFO alert. The alert cover is the same formula base but a little stronger. Now it's got a little higher RG though, so those things offset and give me a very similar look. A little more shape overall out of the Torchet, but it rolls a ton like the Alert. If I didn't have the Torchet, I'd be taking a strongly drilled RSTX2. The X2 is cleaner and sharper than the Alert, but if I went with something uh, a big layout like 4x4x2, that'd come close to making up for it. Dropping into the Symmetrics for ball number 5, I'm taking the Axiom. As you saw in my recent classroom video, it looks way too good on tough stuff to leave it at home. It's like a symmetric gem. Strong, lots of traction, but a really effective shape down lane. 
I can make it blend more or make it sharper if I want. It's a really fun reaction to watch. Not really sure how they make that happen, but they did, so I'm going with it. It gives me so much to work with from really any angle I want to play, so if I like the gem look but don't need the torque, this is an easy sub in. If I was taking a current line ball instead, it'd definitely be the Helios. Very similar balls overall, just a little rounder shape with a bit more pop out of the Helios. Number six is a pro motion, of course, just zero way I go anywhere without one. It's very similar to the Idle Helios actually, and why that one's been so popular while the PM never was has really confused me. The pro motion was really blendy and round, so not as much shape as the Helios, but when you need ultimate control but with some reactive pop, there's nothing better. This one would also be replaced by a Helios if I was picking from the current line, uh, but would likely be pinned down to try to match the PM core numbers better. Going pinned down would get those two almost dead on. Ball 7 is a high road. I've really been relying on this ball pretty hard as of late, and I should probably look at it more often or earlier. This is some fun footage too, by the way. This is from seven years ago, the last time I was a lefty. I've been taking it with me uh, virtually everywhere recently, and it's my bailout ball for when nothing else is working, and it hasn't just bailed me out, it ends up looking really good. I had an awful first set at Ozarks for doubles and singles. Nothing looked good, I was uncomfortable, uh, just a complete mess. But I went to the high road halfway through the third game, and it looked great. Doubles and singles was on beaten path, uh, so it's a 4 to 1 ratio, 41 feet, 24 and a half mils. Uh, just nothing I'm ever thinking about pulling out a high road on, but it's the GOAT for a reason. Just the right amount of traction and shape, easy down the lane while still remaining stable, and a firm arcing walk back up into the pocket. With the patterns being more scorable this year at Nationals, I've just got to take it. Ball 8 is a pitch black. I've heard, I've heard from a lot of people, and the vast majority have said urethane isn't needed this year on either side of the lane, but going anywhere without urethane as a lefty is just not smart. We can still see too much wet dry even on house shots because we don't have the stability of track friction worn into the lanes, so on the left side it feels wetter in the oil and drier on the dry. This is why lefties use urethane more often, not because we want to, but because we have to. Any righties that have bowled on freshly installed lanes will understand. Even with an easy shot, uh, they're still quite a bit tougher for the first couple years until they get broken in. I used the PB exclusively in singles and doubles last year and finished in pretty good shape considering it was my first time as a lefty at nationals. Still using an off-white mix for spares. I think I'm going to drill a fresh one before we go though. As some of these picks are subject to change based on what comes out in the next month or so. Uh, we're getting close to Bowl Expo, so I'd expect all kinds of announcements, so we'll see what happens. And once again, if you like my jerseys, use my code ROSEDALL10 to save 10% off your Cool Wick order at checkout. Use my link to Bowlers Mark to buy your stuff. It really helps me out. SRGBBFS group on Facebook. Thanks Turbo. Big thanks to Storm. Thank you for watching, and may the strikes be with you.